Hey guys, this is Tomek from searchfreak.net. In this video, I want to give you a brief introduction to Google Kubernetes engine by deploying the Hello World application. So that's what they are going to do today. If that seems complicated, don't worry, I will go step by step explaining what are we doing. So let's start with creating the cluster itself. I will navigate to the uh, Kubernetes engine section, clusters, and create my first cluster. If you do it by yourself for the first time, there is a good chance that API will have to be enabled. That will, that will be done automatically, it will just take around a minute or two before you are able to create the cluster. So, there are a couple of things we can do over here. We can specify the name, we can navigate to the default pool, specify the size of the pool, mm, change the uh, node type, change the version, but for now let's go ahead and use the user-friendly my first cluster setup. This is budget-friendly and it's good for your first steps and testing the environment. This approach is really good if you want to just play a little bit with Kubernetes and you do not care about the size of a cluster, the machine type, etc. So once we clicked OK, the cluster is being deployed. It will take around 5 to maybe even 10 minutes before it's fully deployed and health check is completed. But I will speed up the video a little bit so we will not have to wait that long. Ok, after around 5 minutes later the cluster is deployed with the size of 3 worker nodes. We can click connect to get the credentials uh, command, we can copy it or run it directly in the cloud shell. That will authenticate us, our user, to operate the Kubernetes engine we just, or the Kubernetes cluster we just deployed. So let's press enter to accept the command and once we are authenticated we can start playing with kubectl to operate our cluster. So kubectl get nodes will list all the worker nodes we've got in our cluster which are free and to show you what those are, those are actually the virtual machines which were deployed for us automatically by Google Cloud in the background. So if we navigate to the VM instance in the background, you can notice I do have three VM instances ready and those are my worker nodes. All right, so that's pretty much the architecture of the cluster, but let's go ahead and do something with that. Let's try to deploy our Hello World application. For that, I will use uh, already created and already available for us uh, image. So kubectl create deployment, name hello world, and the image is from the Google examples called hello app in version 1.0. You will find all the commands in the description of this video. By running this command, we've created a deployment that uses container image called hello app in version 1.0. I use publicly available image from the Google samples for this demo. So we've created deployment, but what does it mean? When we check kubectl get deployments, we see that our hello world deployment is ready with one out of one um, ready state. To understand that better, let's list all the other resources by running kubectl get all. As you can see, I also have a pod created together with the uh, replica set, the deployment we just discussed, and the service Kubernetes. Let's leave service out of the picture right now. Replica set is a special resource that helps deployment with the scaling up and down the number of pods. So for now, let's ignore that as well. Ok, so let's update the picture on the screen because our deployment created a pod and pod is a resource that has one or more containers inside of it. I know it's a little bit confusing at the beginning, but think of it like that. If you want to deploy a container in Kubernetes, you actually deploy a pod that has containers inside of it. So the question you might have is why do we need the deployment? Why couldn't we just create the pod and that's it? Well, technically we could, but the pods are considered to be relatively ephemeral. They might fail, they will definitely not survive the schedule failures or the node failures, etc. Whereas deployment has a specific number of pods, copies of the same application, and Kubernetes keeps an eye on it. So if the deployment should have one pod and the pod will fail, the new pod will be instantly created and the same image of the container will be used. The deployment has also an option to scale up and down number of pods to increase the availability of our application or to split the traffic against more copies of the same container. 
So to see the example, let's uh, change the number of replicas in this deployment from 1 to 3. To do it, I will execute the kubectl, scale, deployment, name of the deployment, and specify the number of replicas to 3. And believe it or not, but that's it, it's already done. We can verify that by running kubectl get all and see, well, the number of pods, right? Let's increase the size a little bit, and as you can see, we've got three pods right now. All of them are running. All right, the application is there. And how we can access it? Well, the simplest way to uh, access the application is to create a service. A service is an abstract way to expose an application. And thanks to Google Kubernetes Engine, with a single command, I can expose it to the ad site world, giving it the external IP address. All I have to do is to expose the deployment with the type load balancer, specifying the port and the target port on which the container will respond to, and that's it, the service is created. So right now in the background, Google is creating the load balancer with the external IP address for me. If I go with kubectl get services, I can see that external IP is still in the pending state. So let me actually navigate to the load balancer section and check the status. Yes, you can do it. It's actually using the same components we know already from the different videos. So navigating to the load balancer, uh, there is a load balancer with, well, not so user friendly name and the IP addresses are already there. Okay, so let's check the status again of kubectl get services. Maybe it's already updated. And it is, as you can see, the same IP address is available for us for our hello world service. All right, I think it's time to test our application. Let me copy the external IP, open a new tab and just try to access it. And that's the result. We've got our hello world application with the welcome message and the host name. That's the name of the port that responded to our request. So if I list all the ports uh, that are there, you can see one of them responded. All of them are healthy and in running state. As I mentioned previously, the deployment uh, keeps an eye on the number of ports and it keeps an eye that three ports are healthy at this current state. So let me go ahead and try to delete one of them. I misspelled the command, it should be kubectl delete pod, not destroy pod. So let's do it again. And once we refresh the load balancer IP address, you can see that another pod responded. And if we check the number of ports right now, there are again three pods. One has 14 seconds age because it was created for us. If we go ahead and uh, call the external IP address a couple of times, you can notice that different pods are responding. So everything works fine. That's our target. Okay, so let me close the cloud shell for a moment and let's navigate to the Kubernetes engine and the workload to check how it looks like from the well, graphic interface point of view. When we go to the workloads, we've got one called hello world with status OK and three pods being deployed. And when we navigate inside of it, we actually see all the details. We've got some options, we can delete it, we can uh, check where is it exposed to, we can enable the auto scale, a uh, rolling update, or even scale it. Let's just for fun, let's scale it from three instances to 10, because we can, right? Uh, so this is going in the background. Uh, the scaling shouldn't take long. And if we go lower, yes, you can already see the name of the of the pods. If we refresh the page, I'm pretty sure those should be already ready. And that's one of the beauties of the Kubernetes. Um, to deploy the application and to expose it, it seemed a little bit complicated, right? However, when you think about it, there were like two, I think two commands to do it um, at the end without the checking. So if we go ahead again to the cloud shell and get all the pods, you can see 10 pods as well. So <laughs> those were really created. And if we go with the get pods uh, wide, we can see that uh, the pods are deployed more or less evenly between all the working nodes. So even if one of the working nodes fail or two of them at the same time, the application will still be available. Um, 
we can go to the services and see our external load balancer with the IP address. And yeah, and that's pretty much what I wanted to show you today. So um, remember to clean up after yourself because when if I would leave it up and running, it would just consume my money or the credit. So I will delete the service, delete the workload. And if I navigate back to the cloud shell, I'm pretty sure the post should be already deleted as well because we deleted the deployment. So the workload which uh, was responded, responsible for the number of the pods. And the last step, and pretty important, is to delete the cluster. So let me just go ahead and delete this. And deleting the cluster will also delete all the virtual machines which were created for the working nodes. So once this is completed, our, uh, our environment is, is cleaned up. All right, so the summary, we've created the deployment and exposed that to the outside world. And uh, I think that was a pretty nice demo for the Kubernetes for absolute beginners on Google Cloud. Obviously in the real environment, you've got many workloads with many different applications running at the same time, communicating with each other, but that was just a simple demo. That's a good place to finish for today. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. All the comments I used in this video are in the description. Uh, check out my channel for other videos related to containers, Kubernetes and Google Cloud.